today we're going to talk about cylinder deactivation. It could be called active fuel management, multiple displacement system, displacement on demand, whatever you want to call it. What you're doing is deactivating cylinders to make the engine more efficient. The goal is to make a large displacement engine run like a large displacement engine but still get the same economies of a smaller displacement engine. The problem with a large displacement engine is something called pumping losses. When you're not a wide open throttle and you're going down the road, let's say you're just cruising down the road at 40 or 50 miles an hour, you're only using about 30% of the engine's output. When the throttle blade is almost closed and it only has a small slit, when those pistons come down to suck in the intake charge, they have to work against the vacuum in the intake. They have to work pretty hard and the end result is as little as 50% of the air fuel charge can actually get pulled into the cylinder. The internal combustion engine is essentially most efficient at wide open throttle where the engine can breathe freely and it has very little pumping losses. So by deactivating cylinders, let's say we deactivate 50% of the cylinders, we can open the throttle blade up more. It allows the engine to breathe easier and it minimizes pumping losses. Now it's four cylinders that deactivate on the LS engines and the LT engines have kind of changed that with the new L84 and L87 and we'll talk about that in a minute. So we can take a 6.2 liter engine and give it the economy closer to a 3.1 liter engine. Cylinder deactivation is not a new technology. It's been around for a long, long time. Back in the 1980s, Cadillac did their 468, but the technology was just not there. And one of the reasons is when you start disabling cylinders, the throttle blade is going to open more. And back in that day, they really didn't have electronic throttle bodies and sophisticated operating systems that we have today. In today's modern engines, it's quite amazing how much goes on to deactivate cylinders. It doesn't just turn four cylinders off. It stages them on and off. So it's almost seamless in its integration. In addition, the throttle body is disconnected from your foot. So when you go into cylinder deactivation, the computer takes over and changes the throttle body position. So as far as you're concerned, the engine output is still linear, even though the throttle blade is changing positions. One of the issues we had in the early days, and we've been using active fuel management for a lot of years, some of the first LSs I did in the mid 2000s had it, was the exhaust. So you want to have an AFM or DOD friendly muffler. Also the engine mounts became important. Some of the first swaps we did used rubber engine mounts and we found out real quick that we had to change them out to the hydraulic to absorb the vibrations of the V4 engine. We're in a late model JK with a L83 5.3 engine and a 6 speed 6L80 transmission. Most of the truck LTs run active fuel management. Now we're on the highway right now in four cylinder mode. This is a relatively light JK, so we're gonna stay in four cylinder mode a lot. And if we look down here at our average miles per gallon, you can see that we're averaging over 16 miles to the gallon. And if I let off the throttle just a little, I can bring it up. If I give it a little throttle, I can bring it down. Now if we come over here, you can see that we're active. Let me give it a little bit of throttle and we'll kick out of four cylinder mode. see our mileage dropped. Let's bring it back and there we go we're back into four cylinder mode. So we're averaging almost 17 miles to the gallon right now and I just reset that so I expect it to go up a little bit more. Now I can feel a very slight vibration almost like you're driving over a dirt or gravel road. Now we just kicked out of AFM. I'm not sure if you could hear that and now we're back into it and that's what's going to happen. It's going to switch between the two modes based on the load. And a lot of what's going on here, especially with the LTs, is it's not just controlling these cylinders and working the throttle, but we're phasing the cam, we're changing the spark timing, we're shutting off fuel delivery and turning it on. There is just a lot of processing power used to get this active fuel management to work. But at the end of the day, in a light JK like this, it can really help a lot. Now we're coming off the freeway, and if I let off the throttle 100%, we're gonna go into something called deceleration fuel cutoff. And deceleration fuel cutoff literally almost shuts the injectors off, and active fuel management doesn't do you any good under that circumstance. So unlike the Cadillac of all those years ago, what we have is a well-integrated system of cylinder deactivation. Of course, GM is not the only company using this technology. Most of the major manufacturers are. Chrysler has their multiple displacement system. GM used to call it displacement on demand. Whatever you want to call it, 
it's the same theory, and that is to reduce pumping losses. So I get a lot of questions. Do I leave it active? What do I do? Well, that depends. Of course, for emissions compliance, you need to leave it active. Now, if you have a Jeep on 40s, one tons, you drive at high altitude, the reality is you're not gonna be in four cylinder mode very often. If you look at the white Jeep in this video, it has active fuel management. That's actually the first Jeep that Motec ever swapped all the way back in about 2008, 2009 era. That Jeep, the way it's configured, was getting over 20 miles to the gallon on the highway and in the mid-teens around town using active fuel management. It's a relatively light Jeep. So yes, it definitely makes sense to use active fuel management in that Jeep. You want to make sure that your exhaust is set up right and you want to make sure that you're running the hydraulic motor mounts, not some hard rubber mounts. Otherwise, you're going to be visiting the dentist. In the production factory vehicles that have very sophisticated mufflers and exhaust systems, it's almost imperceptible when you go into the four-cylinder mode. So to answer the question, should I run AFM or not, it just depends. If you've got a performance-related vehicle and you're running an LS3, the LS3 does not have active fuel management. The six-liter heavy-duty truck motors don't have active fuel management for obvious reasons. They're going to be hauling loads in heavy vehicles, and active fuel management isn't going to do a whole lot of good in that scenario. The LS3 is a performance engine. It had a manual transmission. It revs up high. And I want to mention that if you're really going to push your engine, you're going to rev it past 6,000 RPM, take your active fuel management lifters out. Those lifters have extra parts that allow them to collapse to engage the active fuel management. And they don't like real high RPM. Now, the newer LTs are really making a lot of progress in active fuel management and the higher performance engines. But in an LS engine, if you're going to be revving it past 6,000 RPM, if you've got an LS3 500 horse, whatever, do a AFM delete. There's kits all over to do that. Here we are under a light load and a relatively light JK. And you can see from these numbers that active fuel management is actually doing us some good. Now, if I were to give it a little bit of throttle, we're out of... Now, you notice we didn't shift because we're in an LT. But what we did is we went back into an eight-cylinder mode and the LT torque kicked in and it pulled us and you saw that miles per gallon go down. Now, let's look at this screen. I'm decelerating right now. now I don't know if you can see these O2s flatlining, but the reason they're flatlining is because we are in... DFCO or deceleration fuel cutoff. So basically the injectors have shut off and there's no fuel going into the engine. Now as we come to a stop here, you're going to see the upstream O2s start to switch because they need to to keep the engine running. The downstream O2s will come up to about 6-700, which is where about they want to run. And they're monitoring the catalytic converter efficiency and some fuel trim stuff. You can see those rear O2s coming up to about their 700 millivolt range. You can see the front O2s starting to switch. You notice our fuel trims are plus or minus 5, which is really good. That's where you want to stay. You notice our aero fuel ratio commanded is 14.7. So we're running on mostly gasoline right now. If we had alcohol in there, these LSs can actually tell if you have alcohol in your fuel by a virtual sensor. It uses the oxygen sensor feedback because stoichiometric is about 1.5% oxygen. That's about 0.450 millivolts. And it can determine the stoichiometry of the fuel that's in your tank based on that value and then adjust to it. But this one's running really close. As you can see, we're running basically zeros on our fuel trims. You want to see that voltage up in the high 13s or 14 volt. These modern electrical systems, especially the transmissions I find, like to have good voltage supplied to them. That GM does have some smart charging that does goofy things. It'll drop down to 12, it'll go up to 15, and it freaks people out. But what we do is we basically set these to run in the low 14s, high 13s, and that seems to be about where they want to run. Now let's talk about the L84 and the L87 because I've been getting a lot of questions about those engines. Essentially, those engines have some new technology like stop-start, and most of you don't want stop-start, but you all know what it is but they have something called dynamic fuel management. And dynamic fuel management is nothing more than an extension of active fuel management. Dynamic fuel management, instead of just taking four cylinders, and let's take a quick look over here. Here's some of our cylinder deactivation information. We've got cylinders one, four, six, and seven that are the cylinders that are turned on and off. The other four cylinders are not. They stay active all the time. 
Well, with dynamic fuel management, they made more cylinders available to shutting down. And from what I understand, with their programming, they can get down as low as two cylinders. So under a really light load like I am right now, and you can see here, our fuel trims are good, our upstream O2s are switching, our downstream O2s are showing that the converters are working as they should. Let's go here. Uh, you want to watch knock retard because even though we're in active fuel management now, uh, knock retard and all the other spark values and fuel values are still important. So you can see here, cruising down the road as a four cylinder, getting over 20 miles to the gallon. Now guys, don't expect to get 20 miles to the gallon. You're just not going to in a heavy JK. And I'm driving this thing like a baby carriage. I just let off the gas. Now we're in deceleration fuel cutoff. But my point is with dynamic fuel management, we can take that four cylinder mode a step further and we can drop down to three cylinders and we can drop down to two cylinders. So when your engine is putting out a very low percentage of its output, you can drop down to three cylinders, two cylinders. You can open that throttle body up to the atmosphere, drop that intake manifold vacuum, and allow the engine to breathe easier. Now, yes, you're only running on a couple of cylinders, but those cylinders are breathing easy. So you say, well, what happens to the other cylinders? Well, essentially, the other cylinders turn into what I call air springs. So after the last four-stroke firing cycle, there's exhaust gas in that cylinder, but since the valves close, it compresses that exhaust gas and then uses that same pressure to push the piston back down. So there is slight frictional losses, but the end result is, as you can see, cruising right now, I'm maintaining just over 40 miles an hour, getting 30 miles to the gallon in four cylinder mode. I've just kicked it into a V8 and I'm getting just over 20. But again, don't expect those numbers. This is comparative, showing that you're probably gonna kick up 20, 30% better mileage when you're running in the four cylinder mode. But when you put that in the grand scheme of things and you crunch the number, you're not gonna get 30% better mileage. You're probably gonna end up getting five to 10% better mileage. In fact, I think that's about what GM says. And that's based on you having a vehicle that can use active fuel management. If you're on the highway, 40s, one tons, light bar, roof rack, and a lot of drag, you're not gonna be in active fuel management very much. So it's not gonna do you any good. So I'm actually a V4 right now accelerating which is something that was hard to do with the LS because it didn't have the cylinder pressure that the LTs have. And you can see that we're down in the mid-teens and we're actually shifting as a V4 under very light throttle loads. So the LTs having continuous variable valve timing and higher compression means we can stay in active fuel management or four cylinder mode longer than we could with the LSs. You ask, what is the downside to active fuel management? One with the LS engines is performance because if you want maximum performance you really want to wind your engine up to over 6,000 rpm you want to get rid of those AFM lifters. Two, there is a slight inconvenience in drivability. In our Jeeps you're going to notice that transition. It's relatively smooth but you definitely know you went from an eight cylinder to a four cylinder because you're losing torque and then when you get back on a throttle to accelerate it transitions back. You'll also notice that the note of the exhaust changes. Now I've got to give GM credit here because they've used a lot of technology to make this so seamless in production vehicles that a lot of people don't even know they have active fuel management. But in our Jeeps, they're not insulated as well as some of these production cars. They're a little bit cruder. You're gonna notice it. Back in the day, I spent some time changing out mufflers and insulating, changing out motor mount. But the bottom line is I'm driving with active fuel management right now and I'm completely happy because I know I'm saving gas. Some guys that don't really care about gas or the money savings, five, 10%, would say, just get rid of it, turn it off because it's more of an annoyance to me having it go in and out of that mode than not. We're gonna be getting into some LED4s and LED7s, and guys, these LTs are awesome engines, and not only are they outperforming everything that came before them, but the economy numbers are gonna be better than anything that came before them. So we're gonna start exploring and maybe doing some test drives, checking economy, and see what the real world mileage is. So we're gonna go back to the shop. We got a lot of exciting stuff going on there, 10 speeds, LT4s, and we'll be back soon.